All right, let's give everyone just a few seconds to kind of mosey on in and drop on in. I'm going to say hello to everyone who's out there. Yes, it is true. I don't know how to type. <laughs> I never learned. Who knew? <laughs> All right, let's get things going. Get this show on the road. All right, welcome, Houdini fans from around the world. It is three o'clock, Florida Eastern Time, and it is time for another episode of Houdini Secrets Live. My name is Chris, and I'm going to be your host. Now, the last Houdini Secrets episode was a couple weeks ago, and we were doing a quick introduction to vellum, and. What we did was go through kind of the basics in order to get things going. Now, I wanted to extrapolate on things a little bit here. And I said, okay, this is good. This vellum is pretty groovy stuff. But how do we go and get this in real time into the engine? Now, I thought that this was going to be a great big, huge demo. And I thought it was like going to take forever and so forth. But lo and behold, it turns out that this is pretty darn simple. And I'm going to go through all of the examples that we went through a couple weeks ago, and I'm going to demonstrate how to get all this stuff into UE4, and it is really not too bad. If you're familiar with VAT or Vertex Animation Textures, you know, from the Side Effects Labs, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's pretty much all you need. It's, it's, it is pretty simplistic, and it's a lot easier than I thought it would be. So this lecture may not be as long as you might expect it to be. So it might be kind of quick. We might get through it. But honestly, what we're going to do is go through the four types of vellum-type objects. We're going to be dealing with cloth. We're going to be wires. We're going to deal with soft bodies. And we're going to be dealing with grains. And so I'm going to demonstrate how all four of those can be exported from Houdini into UE4. And it would pretty much be the same if you were going to do the same for Unity as well. So pretty easy stuff. All right, so let's get things rocking and rolling. All right, if you remember from a couple weeks ago, uh, I created a scene inside of, uh, inside of Houdini that demonstrated all four types of objects. Now, I, well, let's see if we can get things going here. Let's go into the uh, DOP. Okay, okay, there we go. There's our DOP geometry. And there we have, we have uh, a cloth. We have a hair, a uh, hair strand. We have a couple of Robertos. And we have a box of balls. Now, when we go ahead and simulate this, and there it goes. And so it's falling apart and it's kind of like going creepy crawly slow. And what I should have done was I should have uh, baked all this out ahead of time. And so I apologize for the slowness. But as you can see, we've got four different objects interacting with each other. And we are behaving dynamically and they're all going off onto this. All right, cool. So let me explain the overall gist of the process. I'm going to let this process overall bake. And so I'm going to do that by going into the cloth vellum. And then where it has the cloth vellum IO, I'm going to click onto that. I'm going to give it a destination. So I'm going to go dollar job. And I'm going to call it geo. And then, um, oh, what are we going to call this? Oh, let's call this uh, HSL 
vellum. And we're going to go ahead and save it off, load from disk. It's going to error. I'm going to save the disk. And then I'm going to give a quick little bit of a lecture while this bakes off. All right. So what is the whole purpose of this? Well, if you don't remember, I think we went through it a couple weeks ago. Well, actually a couple months ago. But Houdini has a method from the, uh, the side effects labs of outputting abstract information from Houdini. It stores the relative translations, rotations, and normals and color information of arbitrary geometry and packs that into texture maps. And so what you have is an initial uh, FBX file. You load that initial FBX file into UE4. You load in the texture maps that get created. And then you hook it all up to a, a moderately sophisticated uh, shader of which side effects provides most of it for you. And you can go ahead and then edit that little sucker all that you want. And then lo and behold, you have your deformed animation behaving in real time at a paltry of the cost. And so this is really fast because it all happens within the material, mind you. And nothing has to actually get simulated. Nothing has to actually bake out. All that has to do is just load in those texture maps, load in the initial FBX, which is really only one file, and then put on the material for it. And the material does all of the animation. Really, really hot stuff. And so, believe it or not, I thought this was going to be much more t complicated. Turns out you only need one type of VAT, and that is VAT for soft bodies. Yeah, I know that a lot of this stuff seems like it's rigid bodies, but mm -mm, does not work that way. You got to use soft bodies for this. And now that's what's really amazing is because that's the soft bodies going at it, and it applies to just about everything. All right. And so even the grains, the grains really took me for a loop here, gang. I worked for a whole bunch of hours on this, and what I had to do was in order to get grains to working, I had to spend a lot of time reverse engineering the rigid body dynamics implementation inside of the VAT module in order to figure out why the sucker wouldn't work. Turns out, I was thinking, I was going, oh, okay, like I, I, I'm working way too hard for this. And then I just realized, okay, this is Vellum. And Vellum is not rigid, it does not use the rigid body solver. It is not using the bullet solver or any of that. So maybe if I consider this as just exporting a bunch of points and those points rotations and their normals, actually you don't even worry about the rotations. All we're doing is moving about the points and then worrying about the rotations. I mean, their, their normals. And everything's gonna work fine. And you know what, folks, it worked. And I'm gonna demonstrate that in just a little bit here. So I'm just getting done executing the uh, little bake here inside of my vellum window, and then we're gonna move right on to demonstrating and outputting this stuff into UE4. All right, so here we go. And so when we play, there we have the crazy animation. Now, what I think I like about this animation is that we've got all the elements of in here. We've got these crazy Robertos that go, that go ape nuts. But look here, we also actually have some cords that wrap around one of the Robertos. He, t he wraps up in it, and then he drags it off along with him. And so we're going to try to get that interactivity going on inside of UE4. And plus, we're going to export all of these little granules here that, get, that got exported as well. All right, so let's go get things started. So let's see. I'm going to drop into the cloth vellum because this is where all of the action happens, and this is where all the data is. And so here we are. We exported, and this is where we did the bake. And now we have the post process right here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to drop in a normal map.
Now, the, no, I'm, I'm sorry, not a normal map. I'm just going to drop in a regular normal. The reason why I'm putting a normal in here is because if we don't put normals into the objects that we send into UE4, UE4 will not bake properly, and it's going to look ugly. So UE4 needs two essential things in order to bake its geometry query. It needs normals, and it needs UV information. The UV information is used for the light bakes, and so if your stuff doesn't have UV information, you can't use the light baking. So that's kind of a pain in the keister. All right, now we've got our normal in there. So let's go ahead and create five different blasts. And what we're going to do is isolate each one of the objects one by one. So first, I'm going to drop the cloth object here. So I'm going to drop in a blast. And I'm just going to dial in the stream cloth vellum and then do a delete non selected. And as you can see, all we have here now is just our cloth. All right, very simple. Very nice. All right, I'm going to call this one cloth. And now we're going to do our wires. So I'm just going to duplicate this. I'm going to call this wires. Excuse me, I garbage in my eye. And then I'm going to get rid of this. And then I'm going to put in the stream hair because that's what, huh? and so here are our hair objects. All right, now we're going to do one of the Robertos. I don't want to spend the time doing both of the Robertos, so I'm going to do Roberto 2. Well, basically because once we did one Roberto, we've done them all, <laughs> and there's no need to repeat them. So I'm going to go Roberto 2. And so this is the guy that lands, and he stays, he keeps a pretty good shape, and he spins off into oblivion. Now, I'm not sure why he spins off, but that is question for one of the next Houdini secrets on down the road. And then I'm going to do the grains. And so I'm going to do here grains. And let's see. And so this one would be the box. Okay. And so there are grains. Nice and simple. Not terribly dramatic, but good enough. All right, so we're going to start off with the cloth. Now, the cloth is the easiest case here. Oh, I, I should have done this before. Uh, so I'm going to do is add a null after every one of these. So I'm going to call this uh, cloth out. Wires out. Roberto out and do grains out. All right, I'm going to set my display on the cloth out. It's going to come up here, and we've got everything going okay. Now we could uh, do uh, our ROP network from the cloth vellum object, but since we've got everything going up here, inside of the OBJ network, I figured why not, you know, pretty much stay consistent. So I'm going to right click here and then I'm going to drop down a ROP network. And I'm going to call this Vellum Output. Okay, I'm going to drop down my first VAT node. So I'm going to do the Lab Vertex Animation Textures. And then I'm going to call this Vellum Cloth Bat. Okay. Now, okay, this is for 130 frames, so this is the whole shebang. But the cool thing here is that we can leave this all at the soft because nothing is really going to change. So the soft path, I'm going to go drop up a couple of levels, and then I'm going to go into my cloth vellum. 
and then I'm going to go my cloth out. Nice and simple. Easy squeezy. Okay, we're going to leave the frame range at 299, the speed of that. I'm going to turn off my pack normals. Okay, now here is uh, something that's a little bit annoying. So there we got that. We go. Okay, we the texture size. Now I'm going to change this to dollar job and the export. I'm going to call this vellum cloth. Now, actually, I'm going to uh, move this over. I'm going to call this in subfolder HSL for the Hoosie Secrets 5. I'm going to call it uh, vellum cloth. I'm going to put the vellum cloth. All right, I'm going to turn off the position too, and I want the normals. Now, I'm not going to output the color because, well, frankly, I'm not going to use it. So, why generate it if I'm not going to use it, right? I'm going to go ahead and hit, I'm going to go ahead and hit save here, save as, and I'm going to call this HSL vellum demo. All right, and then I'm just going to hit the render button and render away. Now, it is possible that your geometry might be too complex. And if it does, it's going to error out, and it's not going to explain why. One of the things you might want to do if your stuff starts to arrow, what you could do is go here to the texture, target texture size. If you send that to a 4096, that is a pretty darn big texture, and it will probably work. So if you're erroring out, give that a shot. Now I'm going to drop into UE4 here. Now I've got a level here, kind of set up here for that. And so I'm going to drop in, create a new folder here, and I'm going to call it my cloth. And I drop into my cloth folder, and then I'm going to import all of my data. So I'm going to import into here, into our export HSL. We got the vellum cloth, and here's my mesh, and here's my cloth map. Okay, I'm going to risk, keep it into the defaults, and all I want to do is click on this remove degenerates. Go ahead and turn that off, and then click import all. All right, so there is our mesh cloth, and I've created the default material along with it. We're not going to use that, so if we wanted to, we can go ahead and delete that. Yep, get rid of it. All right, I'm going to import the textures. I'm going to go to Vellum Cloth, Textures, and I've got a normal and a position. Click on Open, and so we end up with two. So we're going to have to go ahead and condition these uh, objects. So I'm going to go HDR, uh, so the compression settings, change that to vector. And for my filter, change that to nearest. Save, and then I'm going to do the same thing for position. Click on the compression setting, change that to vector, change the filter to nearest. Save. You know. Okay, now for those of you who've been following Houdini Secrets, um, a couple of sessions ago I showed how to make a script to do this in Python. Now I'm not going to be using that script just because I'm afraid that not a lot of you have been following and you may not understand what I'm going to do when I run the script, but just to show you that that's how I'm going to do things, that's, uh, that's what's going on here. So I want to go ahead and create a material. You might probably be saying, hey, wait a second, if you're using VAT, how come you're not doing a material function? Uh, I'll show you here. I'm going to call this M underscore vellum cloth. The reason for that is because if you have Houdini Engine and all that other stuff installed onto your computer, well, then you don't need to install that. Okay, so all you have to do is right click on here and I'm going to look for soft. And there is MF VAT soft from Side Effects. Yay! And there is my material function that I want. Okay, now I'm, I told you before, I'm not going to hook up the color. I'm just going to leave that as is. So I'm going to move the normal to the normal. We'll offset position here. And I'm going to go, oops, we have to change the parameters on our shader. So I'm going to look over my custom UVs, change that to 5. And then I'm going to go for, go for the tangent space normal. I'm going to turn that off. Alright, then I'm going to hook up 
my UVs. All right, I'm gonna hook up a texture map to this. So I'm gonna go a texture parameter 2D. And I'll go texture. Hook that up into there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and then drop in a scalar parameter. And this is gonna be our speed. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and go grab my two textures. Gonna drop those in here. Gonna convert them to texture objects. And then on the position, I'm gonna drop that into the first one. And then for the normal, I'm gonna convert to a texture object. And I'm gonna put that into normal map. And um, I don't have to use the color and I don't know if it's not giving me an error so it doesn't have to have one so I'm just gonna leave that as is for now and if we get errors we know where we can come to and this might be the problem I'm gonna go ahead and hit save all right then from the uh, the, uh, the vellum cloth material I'm gonna right click and create a material instance I'm going to label that MI Vellum Cloth. All right, I'm going to drop into that. And there are parameters. And so I'm going to go in first. I'm going to go check this out. Vellum Cloth Mesh. That's what I want to do my demonstration on. And I'm going to expose my speed, my texture, and my number of frames. My position min, position max. Okay, uh, this texture map just isn't doing it for me, so I'm going to change this to uh, something else that I found. Um, hmm. Let me see, is it this one? Oh, yeah, there it is. Let's go do a little bit of fish bonage. Okay, so for those of you who don't know what fish bone is, well, you're missing out on something. All right, so the uh, let's go the number of frames. I do know that we're going to need 299. Okay, so let's get these values from Houdini. Okay, so notice that here in Houdini, the uh, data that we need to fill in our material instance have all been accomplished for us. So here on uh, the speed, I'm gonna click that and then go over to UE4 and paste that into here. All right, I'm gonna go grab the position min right here. I'm gonna paste that right here. And then I'm going into the position, get the position max. And I'm going to drop that right into here. All right. So the one way of testing that is to, to sc sc scroll this up and down. And if it's looking like it's behaving properly with the test data, then I think we're working fine. OK, so I'm going to hit save and go to the HSL demo. And I'm going to drop in my mesh. OK, and then I'm going to move this up here. Going to look, focus in on it. I'm going to drop my MI, my material instance, into the element. OK. And you know what I forgot to do, folks? I forgot to do exactly what I said I was going to do, and I forgot to put the texture coordinates on here. Okay, dopey me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into Houdini, and I'm going to go back into my vellum cloth, and then here, lo and behold, here we have the cloth, and then I'm going to just go ahead and go get a UV, uh, texture and I want to keep that orthographic Y and so I'm just going to test to make sure that this is going to work so I'm going to do a quick UV all right uh, nope that's not what I want veritable old Unix socks 
Right from Prism Stays. Yeehaw. Okay, there we go. It works. Yep, that's exactly what we want. Okay, cool. And I'm going to go back into my Vellum Somp. Click that in here. Okay, I'm going to escape this. And I don't want it to whole bake the whole thing over again. Oh, yeah, it's baking pretty quick, actually. So that's kind of cool. Um, all right, so I'm just going to go ahead and re-render that. All right, that's good. And then I'll go back into UE4, and then I'm going to tell my mesh I want to go and re-import yeah there we go that's what we want here we got the good old fishbone flag okay good now we're styling okay very good all right good so you see that's how we did it with cloth actually I whipped through that really really quick and so uh, you'll see that it will be just as quick for you to drop in your vellum, especially if you're going to be combining it with a character. Now we'll have to do it with a character one of these days. Uh, in fact, I wonder if I should do that next week. Oh well, maybe that's something to change for next week because I was planning on working on cloth next week, but maybe we should do a characters in cloth. Well, maybe do cloth first and then maybe do characters in cloth. Alright, so what we have here so let's go back into our vellum cloth. And so let's now work on our wires. You gotta move that over here. So that's out of the way. Okay, now here's an interesting situation. Wires might be kind of tricky. Now the reason why wires might be kind of tricky is check this out. If we look to see what kind of objects we have here, we have points and polygons. We have everything is, these are already packed polygons and with already vertices, but there are only three primitives and three polygons. And so that might be kind of difficult. Now, there might be a better way of doing this. And if you do know a better way of doing this, please advise. So I'm going to kind of... Uh, Kind of go around this to and do something that I know is going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hook up a wire sop, a wireframe sop, and I'm just going to drop that in here. And then I'm going to make my wire radius oh maybe about um, 0 0.05. No, oh, that's 0.5. That's even bigger, nice and fat. Go 0 0.05. Okay, so those are small. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drive them. I'm gonna add some color. All right, so I'm gonna add some point color. I'm gonna add some primitive color. Let's add some color here. Okay. All right, there we go. Now, oh yeah, before we do that, notice that when we we're dealing with wires. It turns it into tubes and spheres. Uh, not quite what we're looking for yet. So we're almost there, but uh, not quite. So what I'm going to do is make sure that uh, these are done accordingly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert them. And by default, it will convert to just simple polygonal geometry. Ooh, it turned it dark. Let's see. Uh, move that over here. Okay. Oh, what we have to do is, uh, let's see, do we have to put the normal information? We've got normal information. Do we have normal information? We do. Okay. Okay, I'm going to turn off this color node here. 
and it looks, looks this looks very dark. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and change my background here so you all folks at home can see that. All right, I'm going to leave that alone for now here. I wasn't quite expecting that. Didn't happen in my demo yesterday, of course. But if we look at the here, we have a whole bunch of vertices, a whole bunch of points, and a whole bunch of primitives. Okay, now this is kind of where things might get kind of dicey for your uh, export. But let's give it a try and see what happens anyway. Okay, I'm going to go back up here. And I'm going to drop into my Vellum network. And I'm just going to create a duplicate of that. And now it's going to evaluate. Okay. Yeah, so it's evaluating. Okay, it's evaluating pretty quickly. Yesterday it was taking forever, so what I had to do was just kind of kill it on the auto update and just let it rip here. So I'm going to change this to vellum wire. Okay. Okay, I see I'm going to have to do this again, so I'm going to turn off my auto update once it finishes and just do manual, so I only want this to bake when I want it to. All right, so everything is going to be so here at the SOP path, and now I don't want the cloth out, I want the wire out. Okay, so we got the wires out. And and so let's here change this name to Vellum Wires. And Vellum Wires. All right, now let's bake. Okay, there it goes. Now this actually might take a little bit longer because there's a lot of data here. Uh, a lot of polygonal information and so it's going to plug and chug and it's going to take a little while. So, did anyone bring any good jokes? Actually, what I should have done was do a poly reduce onto the wire after I finish that. Well, live and learn. And if this doesn't work, then we're going to have to do a poly reduction on these tubes just to kind of minimize their data afterwards. Actually, a poly reduction works pretty darn well. And it decided to go do it again. I do not know why. Thank you, sir. Can I have another? All right, very good. Now that is out, so I'm going to go ahead and copy my M vellum cloth, and then I'm going to go into and create a new folder for wires. And I'm going to drop into oops, drop into wires, and I'm going to paste my vellum cloth, and then I'm going to change the name to Vellum Wires. Okay, so I'm going to leave the texture as is for that. Okay, and now I'm going to get rid of these two guys. And then I'm going to go... Oh, I have to grab my geometry, so let's go ahead and import this stuff. So first let's import the mesh. Here we go, vellum wires, the mesh. Here's our mesh. Import all. Okay, now let's import. The wires, the textures, here we go. Into that. All right, now you see there's a lot more data here that we have to deal with. So here we go, vector displace. Nearest, save, and let's go ahead and modify the position, vector displace, nearest, 
save. Okay. So let's drop these bad boys in here. Go to right click, turn this to a texture object, put this into position. Go right click, turn this into a texture object, put this into normal map, and then save. All right, we are good to go. All right, so let's go ahead and turn this into a uh, material instance. Drop into here. Look at speed, the texture, number of positions. There we go. And a preview mesh. I'm going to look for wires. Okay. Vellum wires, all right. Ooh, these are big objects. And they're this got this horrid green texture. So let's see if we can come up with something a little bit more interesting. Tile, fire tile. Yeah, sure, let's go with this. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so we've got some fire hair here. Looks like redheads are running amok here. All right, so let's take a look. Here's our speed. Go back into V4, put the speed in here. Now go this to 299. Go into there, PD, get the minimum. And then I'm going to go back into Houdini and get the maximum. There we go. There they are. And you see there are our wires frolicking and falling and behaving totally hair-like. All right, let's drop that into here. Now let's drop our wires into the same spot as this. Oh, good Lord. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. I dropped in the wrong object right onto it. No wonder it freaked out. Okay, so let's see, where is this? It's at 17, 290, and 490. So 17, 17, 290, and 490. No, that's not what we want. 490, is it up here? Okay. Now let's go and assign our wires material. And there we go. OK, now you can see one of the wires taking a walk on its own. Why is it doing that? It's because even though there's nothing acting on it right now, uh, it's this get wrapped around Roberto and it does get pulled away and so that's what's going to correspond to that. In fact, let's go get Roberto right now and play around with it. But I've got a little bit of, um, I still have a little bit of interpenetration so I'm going to exaggerate that difference just a little bit to kind of like make it look a little bit better. Okay, very good. Alright, let's go back into Houdini and I'm going to go back into the vellum cloth. All right, so Roberto is basically a fancy cloth. <laughs> uh, not much, not much else I can say to it. Uh, Roberto is just the uh, is just what Roberto is, and there's not a whole lot that can be said about him. And what can we do in order to jazz up Roberto here? Roberto has texture information on him, and he's got vertex information. So what can we get from Roberto? Hmm. Ah, so let's see what we can find. For, what do we have for Roberto? Roberto 2, and we have this Roberto rubber geometry. Okay, he's been poly-reduced, so that's why he operates just a little faster again. So let's go get from that poly-reduced information. 
Uh, actually, let's go and drop in a no, and I'm going to call this. Let's get let's get uh, Roberto's texture coordinates. No, we don't have Roberto's texture map, so it really wouldn't matter anyway. All right, so forget that idea. Well, I'm glad I have you folks do it. So let's just go ahead and export Roberto here. If I want to have a Roberto map, then I would reapply the texture coordinates to the output after the vellum, and then I would um, assign a Roberto texture map to him in UE4. But since I did not do that, I'm not going to. So here we got the Roberto out, and I'm going to just leave that here. And then let's go into our vellum, and I'm going to create a duplicate of the cloth vat. And it's going to, are you going to bake? right after I told you not to. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to call it Roberto Vat. All right, there's Roberto Vat. And then I'm going to look for Roberto out. And then I'm going to change this to Vellum Roberto. And then for the vellum cloth, I'm going to call it vellum Roberto. OK. All right, so let's go ahead and export. It's plugging and chugging, rocking and rolling. Time to take a drip. All right, sweetness. So let's go into UE4, and I'm going to copy my M vellum wires again, and then over here, and then I'm going to create a new folder, and I'll call it Roberto. I'm going to drop that in here, and I'm going to rename this. Roberto wires to, to Vellum Roberto. Okay, we've got Vellum Roberto. Let's go get our geometry. There's our mesh. Import all. There's our textures. Import all. Okay, we're going to change that to a vector nearest. Change that to a vector nearest. Okay, so let's go ahead and adjust our Roberto shader. Now, I'm going to change this to Roberto's color, so let me get rid of the texture because I know that I don't have a texture for him, so I'm just going to create a vector parameter. And so we've got the vector parameter. I'm going to change this into base color. I'm going to drop that in here. And let's get rid of these two texture objects and get those from the browser. Right, so here we have our position. Turn it to a texture object. Move that to position. Here's our normal. Turn that into a texture object. Move that to normal. Hit save. All right, so let's turn this into a material instance. And so we've got our Roberto material instance. Here's our speed, base, color, number of frames, position min, position max, and then we can change this to Roberto. The Vellum Roberto mesh, that's good. All right, this is going to be 299. Okay, let's get uh, the speed from Houdini. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and give Roberto some color here. Should be 
blue like the C. All right. Yeah, even though we don't have this texture here. All right, here is our data. There's our minimum input. And let's get our maximum. Got that. All right, save. All right, let's go ahead and then drop Roberto into the mesh, into the fray. And let's make sure that he has the same coordinates. So what was that mesh again? That was 17,290. Seventeen two ninety, and then four ninety in the Y. All right, so there is Roberto. And he should be blue. Why isn't he blue? Base color? I must have hooked up something incorrectly. Base color. Huh. Not sure why. Oh, well. I'm going to leave him as is for now. In fact, let's keep things interesting. Let's put the normal map into the color here and then move the color into the base color. Yeah! Let's see what kind of craziness we can get Roberto to look like. Yeah. We're just abusing poor Roberto today. All right, so we've got that. So let's put the tarot shader on Roberto, and there he is. Hopping and bopping, and look at that. He even grabs the <laughs> he grabs the wire and then twists it around his arm and then runs off with it. Yes, gang, who knew Roberto was a thief? <laughs> okay. Well, if you can't have fun with this stuff, I don't know what you can have. All right, so we've got the three basic types of stuff in here. Now let's talk to the real troublesome one, and that would be the grains. Okay, the grains, the grains, the grains. Now, I had told you that I did think I would have to, I, I, I did think I was going to have to change this around to, um, make it rigid body because they're grains they're little bitty it, it little itty bitty objects right you know i figured uh that would have been necessary but it told it turns out it's not necessary at all uh who knew uh so um i'm gonna go ahead and click that all right so there's that and so the other that's not gonna do that but okay so but right now you'll take a look at the grain output of the grains and here's a problem. We've got 1,100 points, no primitives, no primitives, no vertices, and 1,100 unconnected points. Not too juicy right now. Not what we need for it. Not what we'll work with that anyway. So let's turn this into something that we can use to that. So I'm going to drop in just a sphere. And I'm going to leave the uniform scale. I'm going to leave it instead of a primitive. I'm going to change it to a polygon, and I'm going to just drop that to a frequency of one because you can see, like these, these little buggers are pretty small, and it's going to inherit the scale from that. So I'm going to leave that as is, and then we are going to just do a simple copy to points. And if you see here, there they are. And now they are nice little polygonal objects. Are they good spheres? No. If you really wanted to go bonds or eight nuts, you could turn that back to uh, the frequency of two. But for this level of detail here, and for this size of the grains, what you're going to have to do is output the texture map size as 4096 instead of 1024 and that's going to be a difficulty okay so we've got that copy to points one thing that copy to points is when you're going to have to do is turn on the pack and instance that's going to be very important go ahead and turn that on 
And so let's go ahead and put a, some UV coordinates on it. And so make that polar and then throw in a normal for good measure. Never hurts to put in a normal, right? And so let's go ahead and move the grains out. And everything's copacetic. Okay, looking good. We've got some shiny uh, objects here. I'm going to go back up in here, drop into my vellum network, and then I'm going to, uh, mm, yeah, let's just go and get a duplicate of Roberto. And I'm going to change that to grains. And then for Roberto out, I want grains out. And then so instead of vellum Roberto, change it to vellum grains. And then here are grains. All right, we've got our thing ready to rock and roll. Remember, if you kept the uh, polygonal size as something really big and complicated, um, you might want to change this to 4096. I did a demonstration yesterday, and I actually ended up, instead of using spheres, I actually used cubes. And that seemed to do the job and get it to work just fine here. So I'm going to go ahead and click render. All right, so we're at 15 of 150 of 300. It's taking its good old time getting these last few particles done. Oh, it's got to go through it all again. Now, this is going to be a fairly uh, detailed thing because we've got just about like what we did for the hair. We had about uh, 12,000 particles to deal with or 1,200 vertices to deal with. And so that's why this is taking much longer than the cloth and Roberto. All right, I'll finish there. So let's go ahead and... I'm going to copy my, uh, let's see, we got, yeah, let's copy the Roberto. Uh, yeah, sure, what the heck. Uh, we're going to copy the Roberto material. And then I'm going to go and create a new folder called Grains. And we're going to drop that in here. Rename that to grains. All right, so we've got that. I'm going to leave that as is. So I'm going to move this over here. Delete and grab. Um, go ahead and grab my textures. Oh, we haven't included the textures yet. So let's go and get those too. Kind of, I guess we kind of need those. Here is the grains. And here is my mesh. Import all. And let's go and get our material our textures. Okay, so we're gonna change the HDR to vector and to nearest save and let's go ahead and get our position vector and nearest okay save now let's go and drop those into our material because here's my position transform to a texture object, move to position, and then here's our texture sample, move to a texture object, and then we drop that into normal, and oh, let's uh, make the texture object go in for the color wrap on there, and make the colors look kind of nuts. I think it's going to end up just being kind of a white color effect noise more than anything. But I'm going to click save, 
and so let's go ahead and then uh, create a material instance and give it the mi prefix okay we got the speed number frames position max okay so let's go ahead and get that uh, this should be 299 and the speed you would think I'd remember the speed by now right nope <laughs> so let's get the position min drop that in here and let's get our position max drop that in here and let's change this to grains so here are the vellum grains mesh They are very colorific. Yep, yep. That's what they're doing. They're behaving right. So, okay. So, let's go into that and then drop in our grain mesh. So, that's as zero. And that, uh, I believe, uh, 17,290. 17,290 it is, right. So, it's minus. 17 to 90 and this is 490 all right so there we go and there it is kind of off on its own let's go ahead and give it the material and there it is okay there goes Roberto skanking off with the wires all right Okay, let's see what happens if we need to rebuild it. Well, if we rebuild this, it could go dark. And so I don't, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. But if you want this to look better, then you could probably get it dark. But as you can see, we have the grains going here, and then we have Roberto, and then we have our wires, all looking great. So we've got all four types of vellum objects inside of UE4, and they all work well. All right, that is awesome. That is great. That is just what I was looking for. All right, folks, that is what I wanted to go over today. And we've got, we are successfully able to get all of our objects into Engine and looking very snazzy. All right, so tune in next week. And what we're going to do is give it kind of like go over a vellum as being used as a cloth. Now, we kind of just kind of roughed over it last week. And it was just very primitive. Now we're going to do something a little bit more serious here. And so we're going to go into that. And that's going to be on the 9th of July, which is next Friday. So tune in next Friday. And then we'll be going over just over vellum cloth. All right, folks. I'm going to be speaking at GDC this year. So if you have an opportunity, and it's not like everyone is rushing in hordes to the educators uh, boot camp, but if you happen to be in the educators room or just happen to hear my voice wallowing by, drop on in and check it and check it out. And that will be on the 21st of July at 1.20 PST, Pacific Standard Time. That is San Francisco time. And I'll be giving my crash course on you on teaching Python and I'm going to be using Houdini to do that so kind of like a two-fisted fighter working with Houdini and teaching Python all at the same time really really cool huh all right very cool now if you like what you saw today go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel and my name is Chris Rota so check me out on Facebook and on LinkedIn and otherwise check out check out Tech Art EDU, which is also on Facebook and on LinkedIn. And if you want to sign up, uh, go to techartedu.com and there will be a little opt-in window there. Go ahead and click on that opt-in window. Give us your email address and I'll make sure you get all of the information from Tech Art EDU as it's happening in its most recent. Okay, gang, thank you very much for coming by today and I uh, hope you all have a really awesome 4th of July, and I will see you all again next week 
when we're talking about a deep dive on just vellum cloth. Arrivederci.